This is Ask Slim Live, July 11th, 2023. Information and support for traders and investors in a time of crisis and beyond. And we've been doing this since the crisis in 2020. So that's almost three and a half years that we've been at this, which is just phenomenal how fast that went. Uh, so welcome uh, to all of you that are here. Reminder uh, to use the uh, chat if you have any questions about the website or uh, memberships. And if you have uh, questions on analysis, please put that in the Q&A. This is the legal that we uh, have to give you all of the time, uh, which tells you that what we do is for entertainment and educational purposes only, and we don't give you investment advice. Everything we do, whether it's oral or written or we do in videos, uh, is to provide information that you can use uh, with uh, your own investment advisors. And uh, please always do consult your own trading plan when you make decisions on trades. Live events are being held as support for members. Uh, we created this uh, for that time of special needs. So it's not really included in your memberships, though we do uh, invite levels one through four regularly. And sometimes uh, the free people are invited and they're here today. So welcome to everybody who's a free member. Uh, you are just as important to us as anybody else. Uh, they've been created for time of special needs and note that these events are, are likely to be recorded. We're recording this one right now. Uh, and it may be offered for public viewing and social media and certainly it will be posted on the website. So we always work to protect your identity. Still, we can't guarantee your identity will be held anonymous. So participating in this event acknowledges that you understand that. And please refer to our terms disclaimers, full legal information at askslim.com if you have any question about that. This is our team, the people that you can contact. Of course, the team has more people in there also, but these are really the people uh, uh, that are public facing. So uh, if you have any questions about memberships, website issues, write to team at askslim.com. Uh, anything about the Slimulator, Momentum Tracker, SIR, ETF report, chart streams, I could go on and on. Uh, that's You contact Matt about uh, almost everything other than uh, trade ideas, simulator rankings, chart analysis requests, those things, which are RV. Katie is not gonna be with us today. Uh, she's busy, but she uh, is the one you contact regarding all of our options content and the cycle low timing tracker. Contact me only if you're a level three or four on general trading questions or an an analytical questions or cycle workshop questions. And Jason on Discord, uh, that these are the people that you contact with those questions and by contacting them directly, uh, it will make it faster. You can send any question to team and Brian will then send that off to the uh, appropriate person. So uh, this is how you reach us and we wanna make it really easy for you to contact us uh, because we know that what we offer is pretty complex and we wanna make it as easy as possible for you. Uh, today we have myself, uh, Matt and RV. Katie can't not be with us, as I said, so she'll be with us, I'm sure, next time. Uh, and uh, if you want to get more information about us, you can go to askslim.com and meet the team. And each of us has an interview up there that you can watch. And I think you'll be fascinated by what you see there if you haven't seen it yet. Uh, for today's agenda, as I said, uh, we'll be free through level four members. I'm going to give you a brief analysis of the stock market. Uh, we'll have an express round uh, of your questions uh, with, uh, uh, not with Katie, it says Katie, but not with Katie, with uh, Matt and uh, RV and I. Uh, for some reason, I, Arvi couldn't make it. I know why Arvi couldn't make it. He was busy with a baby. Uh, and uh, so I switched that. So that has that should say RV there also. Uh, and uh, then Matt is going to give you the did you know section, which is a brief look at services or uh at our services or two in each membership level uh, that you might have overlooked and some discussion around the value, the trade planning value in each of those. So that's what he's going to go over. I'm gonna give you this overview of the stock market right now. Of course, uh, for those of you that are level three and four, you get our hubs and you get my most notables uh, that I put out uh, either when I do the uh, chart updates, chart grid updates on Tuesday mornings uh, and level three members get it in the hub uh, uh, some hours later. So my commentary is, uh, is always out there. And what I, what I said in the last week, uh, for those of you that are free level one and level two, uh, is that uh, I thought that those, uh, those island reversals that we saw in the market were meaningful. 
and that the market was getting tired and that if it was going to be able to move up, you know, it'd probably be rotationally. And we see moving money moving into the Russell. Usually when there's an upside move uh, in a rotational basis, uh, uh, or, or in recent months anyway, when money was coming out of the AI or the tech stocks, they tended to go into the Dow and into the Russell. Now, the Dow has not really done that well until the last couple of days. The Russell a little bit stronger. You'll see that when we look at the charts, though the Dow did come on pretty well. So that's kind of what it looks like, money going either into tech and AI or money coming out of tech and AI and going into something else. And when you have that kind of a market, it's, it, it continues strong momentum. And we've seen that the intermediate momentum and even the short-term momentum has stayed strong with the QQQ or the NASDAQ NDX showing some weakness and showing that there's a deterioration in there, but still overall the market momentum strong with just some signs with these island reversals that there may be a level in here that the market is going to find challenges. And that's basically what it looks like. Now, if you read that, you might have heard it. Well, the market's going to go down. You really didn't read that correctly. I just simply said the market has reached the level where it's getting tired and momentum is still strong and the biases still have to be leaning to the long side. And our MCM does speak to that. And I'm going to show that to you uh, in just a few moments. Let's take a look here as we look at these charts. I'm going to start with the Dow. Now, normally I don't show the Dow at this time, uh, but I, what I want you to see is the really nice uh, cyclical patterns here in the Dow and you know, how important it is to, of course, look at everything when you do this kind of analysis and just look at the beautiful harmonics that you see here in the Dow. You see uh, a very pretty dominant cycle right over here. Remember, these are the cycle brackets on the bottom, not the cycles, just the brackets. And uh, that uh, gives you that you know really, really pretty look at a harmonic family that is uh, a, that is a dominant cycle of 33 bars and a minor cycle of 11 bars uh, to make up those whole harmonics. And you can see that when you had this cycle right over here, it was negatively configured. Even though it was translated, the timing translation was positive. In other words, it didn't turn down till the right side of the cycle. It gave you a negative configuration. And when that happens, there's a pretty good chance that it will fail in the next rally and then continue to go down. And you see that's what happened. So that was a really beautiful cycle when you look at that. Now look at the strong translation that occurred right over here. This really does look like the Dow has more upside. And you can see in here that we are, uh, uh, th that it's pointing to uh, continuing to move on the upside. And the reason I have these uh, potential uh, peaks through sometime in uh, August or September, or early October, is because the VIX has got some troughs in that area. So that's why I think that it's going to be, the other The other ones are, uh, I think, timed a little differently when I look at that, I'll show you. But the uh, this really looks like it's in a decent pattern. It's, it had an upside move, it's got a rectangular shape, and it still has an upward bias. Now, when you look at the daily chart, you can see in here that this is, uh, this is about the second in strength. The S&P 500 and the NASDAQ are weaker looking than this. The Russell is much stronger looking than this. And you could see this island right over here. And between this peak here and this area that got rejected, remember an island is formed by some exuberance on the upside where they just got to get in as it moves back up towards a high. And then a downside gap over here is that there's some disappointment. And this island over here tends to be a meaningful information. It doesn't really matter if it gets back up over here towards that level. Still, you can see that what we essentially have is a resistance zone in there that's, um, let me just uh, come in a little tighter in here. a resistance zone that's basically from here to here. So it can get up somewhere into that area and then potentially stall. The last thing I wanna share in here on this analysis is that this green dashed cycle bracket is the overlay of the Russell, which I have on all of the indexes right now because it's been so meaningful. You can see the Russell pulling it down right over here, right over here, right over here, and then right over here. 
this bigger cycle right over here is formed right here, as you could see. So there's a bigger cycle that has the influence of the Russell in there. And I think that's important to pay attention to. So this is the, uh, the uh, Dow and money you can see is beginning to move in, but still resistance levels in here. Where would the upside targets be? Well, it would be up here in the area of, uh, this is uh, 34,450. This is 34,600. This is 34,750. So these are kind of uh, targets here on the upside that we think that the Dow can get to, but it might actually stall right in here in this resistance area. So that's a look at the Dow uh, and a pretty deep look and not one that I often show. Our level four members occasionally request the Dow. So I keep it updated here, but we don't keep it up in our regular uh, distribution of charts just because of it's kind of redundant and only 30 symbols. Let's take a look at the Russell now when we look at uh, these and I'll just go back here to the weekly Russell. And you could see the weekly Russell is stronger than the Dow having made a recovery high. And we have in here uh, a uh, projection that gets up to the 78.6 of this cycle right here, uh, or uh, getting up to this cycle peak right there. So this level right here is about 1940. This is around 2005. Uh, those are potential moves to the upside in here in the Russell. And you can see the strength in there in the Russell. And now here's that cycle that I have overlaid on the other indexes. And you can see the rhythms in here, how clear they are uh, and why they're important to look at, looking at what is an 18 bar or 18 day cycle in here. And uh, we have this projected to make the 61.8% Fib extension or the upper track right over here, which I had removed and now put back. The question is, well, why would I do that? Well, when this moved down to test this low and take this out, the probabilities of moving above this level where this island was, it wasn't as clear an island as the other ones, the probability of doing that is about 70%. I'm sorry, the probability of, of surpassing it is about 30%. The probability of failing before it gets there is about 70% of failure. So this is an unusual condition and sometimes happens when you're making a broadening pattern. Now, we seem to be having that broadening pattern being made right now. And of course, this could get higher, but you could see here's the broadening pattern over here. Uh, here is, uh, well, it's more like a flag, as you can see. Sometimes it's a flag, sometimes it's a broadening pattern. So that's kind of what's going on in here. And uh, that could be some kind of a wedge that's forming in there and could actually get higher. So not really sure about that, but it's it's uh, when it gets down uh, to a level like it did over here and then gets back above this level here, it is unusual. Sometimes it gets up there and then begins to fail again. Now, what's interesting is here's that 18 day cycle. This, the ideal low, remember it's right there is about the uh, 724, July 24th. So somewhere in here, it's likely to roll over and then to come down again. But again, it could get all the way up here to this 1950 before it does it. Now I'll show you the other two indexes uh, as we look at uh, the SPX, which is uh, a little bit stronger than the NASDAQ right now. And you can see here, looking at this, this uh, still the key thing that we wanna pay attention to right over here is the reversal scout, which shows the momentum as still strong. So even though I say there are signs of tiring, this is still strong momentum. And this minor low that was formed in this swamp cycle here really shows you that there was a ton of strength in there. So that's very important in this discussion. There's a lot of strength on the intermediate view that you can see right over here. And that is dominant of course, more dominant than when we look at the short term right over here. Here is that short term. You can see that island that formed in there. And again, we still have these uh, this upper track and still pointing to the upside because nothing has really changed. When you look at this, you can see the Slim Ribbon PO on the bottom available to level four members for the TOS platform, giving those resumption signals right over here. Here, it didn't give a resumption signal because it was too strong to get just underneath that 25 level there. Uh, but you see it turning up again. So the Slim Ribbon uh, has been configured positively 
every, all, through this entire period that it's rallying right over here, except for one or two days where it turned neutral right over here and then turned bullish immediately again. Uh, so the slim ribbon has been telling you, the slim ribbon PO has been telling you. And what I have been saying is that I'm getting a little more cautious only because of the island and the fact that the, um, that the NASDAQ is getting weaker. So you see this didn't get up to the island over here and uh, getting up close to it there, but still some looking at this level over here of resistance at around 4440 uh, on the S&P 500. Again, if you look at that Russell pattern, uh, the Russell cycle on the bottom, you can see how it has influenced this very significantly as it made that push that early low right over there. That was really pretty early. That was about six days before the ideal low. Uh, but we're keeping, we're not shifting this at all. We're assuming it's going to get back in, in gear in here at some point. So again, the way this looks, when you look at this minor cycle on the S&P 500 here, and you look at the rut cycle right over here, that says the same thing, like kind of fool around up here, maybe get back up to this 4440 area or so, and then come down. And then up here is the possibility where these turn up again in early July for uh, that move up to that 4500 area in the S&P. So we're looking for kind of more sloppiness in here and a little bit of correction, but certainly not anything to look for a big downside trade. Now the NASDAQ has deteriorated uh, pretty significantly when you look at this. Now, the, the momentum is still strong, as you can see right over here. Uh, and on the intermediate term, I said deteriorated significantly, not on the intermediate term, only on the shorter term. So here you could see still strong upward, still an upward projection resistance here at around 15, three and a quarter. Uh, this area of the 161.8 FIB extension is at around 15,700, which is where we actually think it could get to in the later summer as an ultimate high. Now, when I look here at the daily, you can clearly see that the NASDAQ is the weakest of the three that we just showed uh, as it's struggled to uh, get uh, up here. You see that big rejection right there. It's nowhere close to it. So the NASDAQ is weaker. Again, the same thing we're looking at, the timing of the Russell and the timing of the minor cycle here in the NASDAQ. And it kind of says that there'll be some pullback out over here into this third week of July period. And then after that, this what we think will be the move up into make the, maybe even the peak for the year uh, to that 15,700 area. Uh, and uh, that timing for that would be uh, sometime in August or potentially uh, late July to somewhere in mid-August. I'm going to go back to the, uh, I'm just going to go back to the S&P 500 weekly chart for a second in here uh, and time that off a little bit better. Uh, and you can see we have this projected out over here into the early part of August as the potential peak. This period of risk right over here would not um, uh, be expected to bring a huge decline based on the translation in here, though it could. The deeper this declines, the harder it's going to be to get back up to those highs. And uh, we would likely see sometime uh, a low in September, October. It's a little bigger picture because I've had some questions about when the big picture analysis is coming out uh, and then coming back up through towards the end of the year. So probably the biggest risk that we'll see in the market will exist sometime in this late August through October period for this year. And that's probably where there's the risk of getting the biggest uh, downside move in the market during that period. So I wanted to show you uh, all four indexes there and look at them thoroughly so you get a good idea. Uh, and if you have any questions about that, of course, you could put that in the q and I want to switch over to the MCM. Uh, many of you do get the MCM and use it. And I want you to see this intermediate in here. And you can see that looking at these indexes, all four of them that I showed you on the intermediate term are bullish. Now, the SPY was very bullish, so it had a downtick in there. And the, uh, the QQQ was very bullish, and you can see that, but the IWM has improved, and they had an uptick. But they're all, this came from neutral to bullish, and uh, that's the IWM improving. 
So they're all bullish still, no matter what, no matter what I say about island reversals, no matter what I say about inner, about short-term patterns, looking to, like they might pull back down into this third week of July, it's still a very strong situation for the market. And short side trades really have to be short term and very small in size. Now, if I switch this over to, I remember we're in the trader view right over here. If I switch this over to short term in the MCM, those of you that don't have the MCM, I really encourage you to, to get it. Uh, you can see in here that what's happened is that the QQQ, which was actually slightly bearish has now come up to neutral on the short term, but it is only neutral. And you have the IWM now is the strongest and the diamonds and the spiders as, the, as only slightly bullish. So in the short term, you can see in here, even though there are up arrows in all four of them, uh, they're, they're not as strong as they were before. And certainly looking at the QQQ, there has been some deterioration in there. And that's based on the reversal scout, which is giving you some significant downward uh, information there, as you can see, or negative information. So uh, that is uh, what I wanted to show you is that the shorter term just isn't as strong. And that just might be setting up for some minor pullbacks that we're looking for. But again, not anything huge in the way of pullbacks here uh, in the market, uh, because the momentum is still really strong. Now, uh, remember that we're getting now into an important period. First of all, the earnings deluge is going to be in a couple of weeks. It's going to start in the next week where you're going to start to get earnings. And don't be surprised if the earnings are pretty soft uh, and comparisons are tough. This is a tough comparison period now. And I think that, and I mentioned it in market in, in the market week show that I think this is going to be a tough time for earnings. Also, we have the inflation numbers that are going to be coming out in the next couple of days. And that's probably why we had the strong close right now because uh, today, because traders are thinking, well, inflation is likely to get a little softer and then the bids are going to come in the market. But that doesn't necessarily uh, have to be true. Now, I'm not showing a whole lot in here uh, about the other commodities or not anything about the other commodities. That's Ivy's job tomorrow to bring that more than one hour video to you uh, in uh, future speak for level two through four, but he's going to show you some things in there that I think are important, especially the dollar, which has had a breakdown in there and is giving some pretty negative messages uh, in the dollar. So I think that's something that is also important. And if the dollar really starts to get slammed, uh, that may be getting ahead uh, with, uh, or worldwide investors getting ahead of what might be the peak here in interest rates. So he'll show you that also uh, in, in the bond market, uh, how the interest rate market is due to start to pull back or the treasury market due to start to move to the upside. That could be money moving out of the stock market and into the bond market. And that could cause some problems for the bond market. So this is kind of a, this was supposed to be a brief, but I went a little bit longer than I expected to. So uh, we do have some questions coming in in the um, in the uh, Q and A. So that's great, uh, and uh, I'll start to look at those right now. RV, I assume you've been making a list of the things that you need to look at. Uh, have, so uh, good, good. So uh, let's see what we ask here. An, an anonymous attendee. Uh, is saying, hi, Slim, I really appreciate your work. Oh, he said, I appreciate all your great work. Uh, and uh, when would the mid-year big picture update become available? Okay, that will be available for level two through four, uh, probably in the next seven to 10 days. I've started working on it already. It's a little bit of hard work because I'm not sure how extensively I'm going to do it. I'm definitely going to bring the things that I think are most relevant, which is the stock market and the bond market and the gold market. I don't know if I'll do all of the commodities this time, but that's pretty much what most people want anyway. So I've started to work on that already, uh, updating the monthly charts. Uh, and uh, now I have to start to look at correlations between monthly and weekly uh, to get uh, that done. Uh, uh, Zishan said, haven't seen you since 3.30. I says, so must have not read it right. Well, I'm glad you are here now. Uh, so don't miss any more of these. Uh, can we look at bonds? Uh, and yes, I can look at the bond market. So let me do that right now. Uh, I'm going to look first at uh, TNX, and I don't want to steal too much of our thunder in here. Uh, so uh, you can see in here, I'm going to keep the side-by-side -side up right there. 
And you can see in here that what we're looking for is a peak in TNX. And then sometime out there, maybe a test of the peak. I really think that this area of four, uh, of around 4% is the area that it's gonna stall at. And this lower track right over here might be a test out over there. This really aligns with a rally that we expect in the ZNs. And you can see on the daily chart also here that there's a period uh, out into, uh, that would be about uh, August 7th, 8th. So that would be the next four weeks. And that would push this out a little bit further on the weekly than I have it drawn uh, to the right side of that ideal. Um, so that would be, well, I do have it out to the right side of the deal. This looks right. About a four week pullback or, and a four week rally in the uh, ZNs is what really we expect. Let's just look at the ZN here on the side by side. And you can see that uh, the ideal trough right over there is due the first week of July, as you could see in that note. And you can see these cycles right over here. Now, this is so significant because when you have a the minor and the intermediate and the dominant cycle all coming down at the same time is where you have the highest probabilities of capitulations. And look what happened there. It was pretty spot on as it came down really heavily and now has begun to move up. But this is way early. I mean, we those just don't know for sure that this uh, important bottom is in, but you've got one, two, three cycles now in a phase that would be a rising phase. We call this the bottoming phase when we don't really have confirmation yet that the market, uh, that this market is going to move up. But this really looks like a bottom inverse to what we looked at in the, uh, in, in the uh, TNXs. And so we saw a TNX rally, uh, a dec uh, decline of about four weeks, four or five weeks. Then you get a rally in here, four or five weeks. This may be drawn too optimistically uh, and uh, then pull back again and then probably begin to move up again. So that's the ZNs in there. Uh, I hope that's enough of the bond market that uh, you were interested in seeing, uh, but the rest of it will all be shown by RV tomorrow. Uh, so that is a look on uh, at the bond market. Michael wants to see crypto uh, and whether or not the rally will hold up uh, along with crypto related stocks. Well, I don't really look at any crypto related stocks. Uh, we might have uh, the, the, the team might have uh, Coinbase or some of the other ones uh, in there, but I don't really look at them, but I will show you the, uh, let me just get rid of that. Let me just show you uh, the Bitcoin market, uh, which uh, I published today, the updates. And, you know, basically what we're looking for is uh, a solid upside move that begins really pretty soon. So let me just get that over there and get this over here. And you can see in here that we are projecting to the upside. Now, it's no secret that I want to be a screaming bear when it comes to looking at Bitcoin, but I, I, I have to be mechanical and do what the charts tell me. And this is just a extremely bullish scenario looking at this. And I, I said in a, in a most notable a couple of weeks ago, unless the SEC does something to kill these, they are set up for some giant upside moves. This is uh, a, a very early low right over here, as you can see. And that's because Blackstone came out and said that they were really gonna support this with a cash ETF. And you had that big move right over there that was very significant. Now look what's going on right over here. While this over here should be getting completed, money flows are not pushing to the downside. There's some supports here from the daily, which are right over here on the daily. And in just a matter of a few days, this is gonna bottom. And same thing over here. And it really looks like this could really take off to the upside. Our upside projection in here uh, is up to that area of the major 38.2% which comes in at 35,700. That's a pretty reasonable upside projection in here. And once you get above this peak, I mean, we're gonna be looking for an impulse right over here of some significance. So there's that peak right over there. And once you get above that cycle peak, then uh, it's bullish and you probably get that upside impulse. So 35,700 is what we're looking for here. You can see in here, the FIB extension pointing up right over here. 
that is the 78.6% Fib extension at 34,000. 34,900. The top of it right over here is at 37,400. That could be where it's going to end up here. This is a very bullish scenario looking at that. And I uh, can't say anything else about that uh, other than, you know, it's really looking very solid. Uh, Alex wants to know, do I see the bullish flow in the rut continuing for some time? I think I covered that. Uh, uh, in that rut analysis, and RV certainly will continue with that uh, in the Future Speak show tomorrow. Uh, uh, Anonymous says that the Bitcoin and Ethereum analysis really went off this time. What are the revisions you see? Well, I think I just showed you the revisions. Um, uh, I think that the reason that the analysis in the past, which was looking for further declines uh, to complete the corrective phase, didn't happen is because because of BlackRock. I think that they're just supporting it so strongly that uh, it didn't happen. Of course, the the analysis is going to probably be off maybe a third of the time. We pretty much think that we're going to get 65 to 75 percent, 65 to 70 percent. Uh, when you look at the direction of decisions based on the trade ideas that RV does, those come in right around 70 percent in proper directional decisions. All of that is where we where we like to land. And I'm telling you, you get a two to one edge on anything and you can get rich on it. So we're really proud of the fact that we're wrong about a third of the time. That's kind of a Michael Jordan thing, isn't that? Um, let's uh, take a look at, uh, let's see, SMH. That's uh, something Ari can handle. Uh, Diana says, some analysts say no bear market ends without the VIX spiking over 40. But last year, we never got to the 40s. Do you see the days of major VIX spikes behind us? Or, are, or, is, or is there something bigger in store for the VIX coming? I can guarantee you that in the next five years, you will see VIX over 60. That's about all I can say. Because we're going to have, in the next five years, probably at least two significant downside moves in the market. Free falls, black swans, whatever you want to call them, they just happen. And there will be a panic where investors need to get insurance on their positions. And that's why they bid puts up that the way that they do. Remember, the higher the VIX goes, that's a reflection of the demand for puts is what that essentially is. And when the VIX goes down to levels like it did now, like 14 or 13 or 12, it's because nobody wants puts. As they say, puts are schmutz. And that's uh, what happens when the uh, when nobody really believes that they need to protect anything. Of course, the VIX is now moving up at a time frame where it should be, and Arby, I'm sure, will show you that tomorrow. So that is uh, the VIX is actually getting back in line, and I'm happy to see that because it has been an amazing tool for market time for us. Uh, Mark Mark Fry says lower inflation numbers tomorrow, and the uh, Nasdaq uh, have a strong upward move. Well, that's possible, uh, of course. And, you know, we believe that the market has got good upside momentum still. So that certainly is possible. I believe that um, the NASDAQ, the money to support the, the move in the market right now can, will only come from the NASDAQ. Uh, so I don't think that, the, I think the NASDAQ will continue to underperform the market. And I could even see, you know, more days where the Dow and the Russell is up, uh, the S&P is flat and the NASDAQ is down. Uh, so I think that could be ahead of us. Uh, do you see potential for investors to start piling into the energy sector? Howard is asking that question or just going nowhere. Well, right now it's pretty range bound. Ivory will show you that tomorrow in future speak. Uh, and the, uh, uh, the products, the products, uh, uh, heating oil and gasoline are actually stronger. I still think that there's a range for a while, but uh, there's a time coming in not too long out there, maybe it's a month or two, that I think the energies are overall going to do better. And I think the energy stocks will do very good uh, during that period. Um, uh, Anonymous says, what, what, what would it take for me to get bearish? Well, it would take um, cycle patterns that configured negatively and momentum conditions that turned negative. I mean, the first thing what would happen would be you'd get a 
uh, it's a domino a action. We've built it that way in our algorithms, essentially, that uh, the, you know, the, the, the two hour chart, the 15 minute wiggles a lot. So that's, you know, it's for short term traders, but the two hour will be the first one to tip over. And then if the two hour tips over into negative and then the daily tips over and the configuration of the cycle goes negative, it will warn me that an intermediate top is in place. The probabilities of that will be over 70% at the time, maybe even more. And uh, that will then tell me to be bearish. I like to be bearish. I love to trade bear markets. I think they're much easier to trade and there's much more money to be made. Uh, however, I'm going to stick to what our indicators tell us and momentum with momentum conditions strong, you have to respect it. You have to, if you're going to make trades uh, uh, that are uh, counter to the, what the market conditions are telling you, they have to be short term only. They have to be the smallest size trades that you take. Your bigger trades being with the momentum, your smaller trades being against the momentum. And I can guarantee you that the net result is positive because the impulses go with the direction of momentum. And that's what we teach. And I'm, we're gonna keep saying that and keep teaching you that because that's how you're gonna be even more and more successful by respecting the momentum and varying the size of your positions based on that. And uh, I don't care if the market is strong and you wanna short it, short it with a quarter of what your normal position is or a third. And when the market is going in the direction you believe with the momentum, then cannonball the position, you know, put on a third and put on another third and put on another third. Uh, the impulses will make you money. That is the key to your success are catching those impulses. And we're, we've built, uh, algorithm, our algorithms are built around that. So for you to be able to use that and our market condition indicator and a market condition monitor and all of those things are all built around that. And when you get a load for the short-term or day traders of what the day trading uh, impulse monitor is gonna look like, it's gonna knock you out because it will catch every single big upside move. It will call for some bigger, for some upside moves that are that don't happen, but the idea is to catch the big upside move. So that's uh, what we're building and that is gonna be available to you really soon. So we're working on that. Uh, our development team just now has moved in uh, actively on that because everything has gotten done with the rest of the uh, MCM to this point. So uh, for those of you that are really looking for information for day trading scalping, you're gonna love the impulse monitor. Uh, so, uh, you want me to look at TLT. All right. I'll put the TLT up. Even though I just looked at, uh, the 10 year, here's TLT. You're going to see a very similar situation here. Here's the weekly right over here. There you go. And here is the daily right over here. And it's the same thing that we showed in the, uh, in, in, in the ZNs and the 10 years, this is just a 20 year where it uh, came down into this cycle low here, it capitulated uh, here on the daily with that uh, sinking of the weekly trough. Here's the weekly trough right over here. And now the bottoming phase is right here. We don't know that it's in. This is an example. Okay, if you were looking at these cycles and saying, wow, it looks like interest rates are gonna come down. It looks like the futures are gonna go up. In a bottoming phase, you're going to do a quarter of a position. You're going to do a position that if you're wrong, it's a flesh wound. It's a little blemish. It doesn't really matter. And then you can continue to evaluate it. When, when things get confirmed, and Katie will talk about those in the, in the cycle low tracker, then uh, you will be able to have that information. So we, we supply all that to you. Uh, and uh, I really hope you are using it. So bottoming phase right over here on the weekly, on the daily, you could see it inside those two timing lines right over here on the weekly and on the daily. And that's an important bottoming area right over there. I believe that you're gonna get an upside move uh, that is tradable right now. And based on the timing of the interest rate decline that we're expecting, I think you get a, get a four or five week pop in the futures here. And this is the ETF for the 20 year in the TLT. So uh, that's a look at TLT. And again, uh, you'll get a, a bigger look at that uh, when uh, RV does the show tomorrow. Uh, JPM, that's for RV. Um, 
TNX, uh, we looked at that already, Zara. So if you didn't, if you got here late, you can go through there. George, second half of the year will be tone, will be uh, discussed in the big picture analysis coming in a uh, week or 10 days. Uh, uh, Lau, I think I discussed the TLT just now and how it, Lau says this is a good time to start accumulating. Uh, I think that, uh, I think I answered that really well. So uh, if, you, if, you, if you didn't hear that, go back and listen to that part again about what you do in bottoming phases. Uh, as Zishim said, uh, I'm still here since I Steve. Uh, haha, I'm still here till since I Steve is. I think I get that. Appreciate you guys. And any idea why Bitcoin and Ethereum analysis did not follow our expectations? I think I contact. I uh, mentioned that already. He says I was short and got burned. Of course, when you say you were short and got burned, the coach in me wants to say to you evaluate your position sizing. Because if you got burned, it says to me that you lost a lot. If you lost some money, fine, you're going to lose money based on our analysis, maybe a third of the time. But if you got burned, your size was too big. And that's what I want you to look at. Take ownership of your trades, and uh, then uh, you'll be in control of your own destiny. Uh, for solar is for RV, uh, Microsoft, OIH, uh, Anonymous says, Slim, was, what is the time range? What time range do you expect a multi-year peak of similar importance to 2002 to occur? You know, I'm going to discuss that a little bit in the big picture analysis. I, I, I'm going to tell you right now that this is a tough one for me because I believe we're in a secular bear market. What that essentially means is that I believe that the market will be correcting for seven years or longer the big upside move that it's had. Now, if you go back and look in the 70s when it had that secular bear market, there were times that it took out new highs. And some of the bull markets, the, the cyclical bull markets were very short. Uh, and some of them were, were longer. So uh, it, it, the situation is such that it's really hard to discuss that kind of peak and trough timing when, you're, when, when I'm believing we're in a secular bear market. So that's, uh, that, that's going to make it hard. And my big picture analysis is just... I'm just going to take a peek at looking out further than just over the next year, uh, looking at the quarterly cycle patterns uh, and the basically the monthly patterns is where I put most of the focus. So it's really hard for me to answer that question. Uh, David says, off topic, Slim, thanks for the heads up on car. I'm in the trade and doing great. Katie, thanks for Baba. And I'm in and out and it turned out great. So there's somebody that's using what we what we say and has had winners. So there's two winners right there. Somebody said they got burned, two wins, one loss, one third wrong. I'm telling you, that's how it works out. So uh, <laughs> I'm gonna make it right. Um, some Elia waves, uh, I, I'm sorry, I cannot pronounce your name. Big Niu Majblot, I know I just killed that. So sorry for that. Some uh, Elliott wave theorists say corrective upward wave is coming to the end, and we will soon enter another downward impulse, which will push SPX down to 30 to 2,800. What do you think about that? I don't think we could get that low until the real full-fledged cyclical bear market. And I don't think that's coming until after 24, but I just gave a little bit away. So I just don't think that's happening right now. Uh, the uh, especially when we're likely to be in a period of, of disinflation and declining interest rates. I just don't see anything happening other than going to war with Russia. Of course, anything can happen when you have some kind of a black swan event. Uh, Cam Chan says, what does bottom pending versus bottom confirm when price is in that trough window? Uh, write Katie at AskSlim.com and ask that question. She's going to be able to help you with that a lot because she's in charge of cycle bottoms. So uh, please do write to Katie at AskSlim.com. 
Uh, and uh, I'm about to uh, turn this over to Arvi, uh, so then we can get over to Matt. Arvi, ready to take over? Yes, sir, Slim. Thank you. Let me go ahead and bring over the screen, and we'll jump through some of the symbols, which there are a number of. So uh, let's first pull up Apple, and then I'll share my screen here. All right, so you should see the weekly and daily for Apple. Weekly on the left, daily on the right as usual. So mm -hmm. what we see here in Apple is just just a monster move on the upside off of the lows, you know, right around 125 straight up essentially uh, to 195. And again, very bullish move that's not likely done quite yet. There's a low that's due here, 731 to 918. And what we're looking for is I'll show you, but just a little bit higher still yet here. And then for this to roll over after that, let's uh, go ahead and shift over to the daily chart. Look at these bullish signals coming out here for months in the in the slim ribbon po here here look at these signals look at look how clean this is this is giving you the bias right here and these are giving you excellent signals of follow through in the overall trend which is clearly to the upside each of those led to nice uh, moves higher okay so what's happening here still same overall overall picture we have a low that's due watch for this to get out of this oversold region and we'll be looking for another move back to the upside here then after that watch for this to then possibly roll back down on the downside after uh, it forms its next high here so there's a low that's due 714 to around 724 look for a sell-off and a rally into early part of august and then we'll have to see if it can fail there turn down and then lose that low if that happens then there are higher odds of a key weekly high that is in place here in AAPL. If we shift over to uh, the SMH, just gotta make sure I cover everything here. Uh, pull up the weekly chart. Okay, so also really nice move off of this higher low base right here. This was a higher low versus that low right there. Then we move through that old high and are clearly still in a rising phase here. Now we are looking at this zone from 156 to around 166-ish. Watching to see if it can form its high around there, but still overall bias is positive. There's a low that's uh, due uh, from 925 up to around 1113. Shift over to the daily chart. Now this is still holding up okay, okay? So this got back to that low, right, almost. Uh, this, this low was at 146.96, this low is at 147.16. If it can now move back through that same level, that key 78.6 fib, which is up here at 153.87, we'll be drawing this track then back to the upside. Okay, so this is that key line in the sand right here at 153.87. It needs to get over that uh, for us to then uh, to then show a draw as follows. Okay, like that, meaning a higher cycle high versus that old high and a higher cycle low versus that old low into this next low which is do 728 to, uh, to 87. Okay, so that's look there at the SMH. Shift over to LRCX. Also acting just fine here. Let me pull up the charts. And again, I don't have all these fully updated since I just uh, just saw this, but what's happening here on the, on the weekly is clearly overall the same picture, right? We formed our low right here on 313 and did rally up into this zone. We're looking for the high to form around this zone from sixty from 662, and that goes all the way up to around 715. Higher odds that it would form around here. So we'll, we'll be looking for this to, again, form its high, turn down, and then give a, a clear shift to the downside in the trend. That will give you a, a, a higher odds play on the short side. We aren't there yet. Uh, there's a low that's due 94 to, uh, to 10.9. And let's just see what we have here. Okay, so this really hasn't changed a whole lot. If we just draw this in, this is that uh, that overall shape right here. Form that higher high versus that old high, higher low versus this old low. Move to new highs again. Formed a low here, and it's now holding. So the overall question is, can we move back to new highs versus that old high right there at six fifty one oh one? If so, then everything is still positive. If we then rather fail, meaning turn down and then go red in terms of the overall trend that would then turn things back to the downside in the short term. So we just have to watch this one 
very closely here in LRCX. Pull up uh, for solar. And this one has a low that is due. Uh, there's a low that's due 522 to 710. We are watching this one closely. It has not yet put in a low. So very, very key to emphasize there is no clear low that is in place as of yet. We are just watching for this one to form its low. Once it can form its low, if if this was the low right here at 176.96, we would look for a rally up into the zone from around 204 to 211. If we shift over to the daily chart, what do we have to see? Okay, we still have just a very flat trend here. This needs to go positive, and we also need to see a higher low form into this low, which is due uh, 727 to 87. If so, then we would look for a move like this, a, a higher low base, and then look for this to turn up after that as we go out into the early part of August. That's really what we would be looking for if a key intermediate term bottom was in place. If we go ahead now and shift uh, over to Microsoft, this is also just super strong on the upside, uh, as we all know. Pull up the weekly chart. Now, this is about as positive as you will really ever see. Uh, there's a low that is due 522 to 724. And you can see this is just forming a really nice, uh, a, a nice flag here, sorry that is really poised to get another pop still back to the upside and move through that old all-time high at the $350 level. That's still what this is saying is the highest odds here. Uh, in MSFT, we are looking for this zone to hold 321.75-ish uh, to around 313, and then look for a move through 350. Shift over to the daily chart. <clears throat> now, we, we do have earnings uh, here. It looks like 725 in the after hours, so keep that on the radar. There is also a low due around that same time, 718 to 728. Look for a little bit lower. Hold this zone from 323 half to around 316 half, and then look for this to turn back up and then start printing some higher highs and higher lows here. That's really what you want to see and to see this overall trend turn back to the upside. That's really very, very important to emphasize here in MSFT uh, for a clear low to be in place. If we go ahead now and shift over to OIH, now OIH has ripped to the upside on the heels of both um, of uh, on the heels of both HAL as well as SLB. Both of those names have just ran sharply uh, to the upside, and they do, if I look at it, uh, are are really right around one third of OIH. So it's a it's it's uh, that's why we're seeing such a sharp move here. Is those two names have just blasted off on the upside, so we're seeing OIH blast off with it. However. What's, what's really important to emphasize is that this is a, a 23 bar cycle. And it, it said that there was a low due right here in that late May, early part of June. And we have now turned up. <coughs> Sorry. So we're already through that, that key 78.6 fib. That's a, a really positive indication. What it says is what's our next level up? That next level up is the old swing high here at 336.30. Overall, good odds that we would look back at that level and clearly in a rising phase on the intermediate term here as well in the OIH. Shift over to the uh, the the overall uh, the overall structure that we're seeing on the short term. Look how positive this is. This put in this higher low, very interesting setup. Put in this higher low, turned up, and then you can see we had this low that that was due. That's this very small sell off. What does that look like? This is a really swamped shape right there. And what that said is highest odds are in that next rising phase, we would move to new highs. That's exactly what happened. And we're blasting off here in the OIH. Very good odds. As I said, that, that we would look back at the old highs at 336. If we go ahead now and shift over to uh, JP Morgan, I'm starting to lose, lose my voice here uh, just a bit here. So um, we're going to jump over to the weekly formed its low right on time. There was a low that was due 5.1 to 6.12. This low formed right on 5.1, turned up. And overall, we would look for a move into this zone from 149.5 to around 156.5, shift over to the daily chart. Also, a firm uptrend is in place. And we're seeing higher cycle highs, higher cycle lows forming in each of these minor cycles. This is a bullish overall setup here still in JPM. We have a low that's due again, 
in and around uh, 718. So overall shape of this move would be move like that and then still yet higher as long as this trend stays positive. This is what we would look for is for a move uh, really like that and for a, a rally into possibly as, as high as around 152-ish uh, here in JPM. This next kilo is due around mid-August. So that's the look there at, uh, at JPM. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to finish off with uh, PYPL because I'm starting to lose my voice here, Slim. Um, so I'm going to do PYPL and then end it right there. Great, because um, it's uh, then we'll have time for Matt to say a few words. <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, so there's a low that, that that is due right here as well. And we have now turned up. We are looking for a rally into 77.5 to around 80, 82, 60 on, on the higher end. Shift over to the daily chart. Also seeing this higher low basing cycle forming in the short term, reasonable to move up to that 78.6, around 73 half, give a pullback and see that higher low form into this next low, which you do 731 to 89. If that can happen, we would look for another move after that back to the upside. And Matt, I'm going to hand this, this uh, off, off to you, sir. All right, guys, great uh, analysis and instruction as usual. Well, I'm going to try to be really brief. I'll, I'm going to do a special uh, Did You Know segment and and how... Uh, you can maximize uh, our services for your trade planning purposes. I'll do that maybe this this Thursday. So I'm going to keep this one ultra ultra brief brief relative to what I was going to do, and I'm just going to step through uh, the services that I wanted to just point out in in terms of the deep dive into the the trade planning process and how uh, we can go through that. I'll do that on Thursday, and I'll invite uh, free through level four to uh, to attend. Okay, so the, the areas I wanted to cover, well, first, I wanted to take a quick step back and just say that there's a central theme that you hear from all of us analysts here at Ask Slim. And it's really, it's based on the methodology that uh, Slim has developed and has evolved over the six decades. And, and that's that when it comes to putting the odds in, in your favor, we, the method has been designed to provide you with the ability to generate technical evidence. And this is what you would want to have with any kind of methodology, technical evidence that uh, gives you first and foremost, what's your bias, uh, then your key levels, uh, and then a sense of timing. And uh, obviously, when you put all that together, do you have a, a setup right now? So do you have a signal? Do you have something that tells you the trades that go? And obviously, you need to have your money management rules in place. You need to understand your position sizing uh, and so on, as Slim discussed there. But that's the central theme. And that's really what all of these services that we provide are meant to do in some way, shape, or form is give you a, give you a feel for bias, levels, timing. And uh, through all of the indicators that we use, especially if you're a level four, or level three, where you can see these things live, or if you're level four and you can get your hands actually on them, you can you can utilize these to help build your own process for, for signal evaluation. So in level one, the daily snapshot, if you weren't aware, we have, uh, I, I work on this every single day and I work off of the, essentially the work that Slim and RV do to, to do the, my own analysis, and then also to generate my own trade planning. So in, in, in that section of uh, Daily Snapshot, I'll just pull that up. If you weren't aware that it exists, I know everyone loves to go. Uh, Harvey, can you see the uh, level one? Okay. In the Daily Snapshot, you know, there's the technical overview. So essentially, I'm walking myself through the trade planning process. You know, I'm looking at the charts that we, we do. And then I'm thinking through the analysis and that's all of that. And I'm putting, th put, putting together the bias, the key levels, the cycle structures. So I'm really, you're seeing me uh, sort of uh, surface what's going on in on my mind in terms of the process. There's a lot there, but, but I've organized it in a way so you can see what's changed in italicized font. But all the key data, as I just mentioned, that you want your methodology to be able to generate bias, levels, timing, signals. But the key here that I wanted to show that if you weren't aware is if you go into the beyond the charts, the charts are fantastic. They're in there every single day. Uh, and But the outlook, right? So this is my opportunity to take uh, and, and really think through the trade planning process, both upside and downside. 
and uh, then uh, go with an overview. And then I audit that every single day and I let the members know if we've reached those levels or not. And this is reviewed every single day. And I think it's something that I want to surface more on Discord. I bring it up in our trade planning, but I wanna I really get some uh, activity around that because I know how much uh, information is des desired around the index. So anyways, it's in the uh, daily snapshot, there are outlook periods with price projections uh, based on a review of the indexes. Okay, so we're not telling anyone where to buy or sell. I'm just doing a trade planning process so that there can be a, a review of uh, key levels based on our, our method, and we can have a conversation around those. Okay, so that's in the daily snapshot. Next was the spider ETF review. Again, staying with the theme here of providing services that give you information around uh, the trade planning process. The select sector spider ETF review is definitely something to take a look at because we have the key the charts, the weekly, the daily charts in there. And then we step through technical notes, upside overview, downside overview, again, getting a sense for your bias and then going into detail on where the key levels are that will trigger the next move. So in level one, you really get a lot of what I would call the essential building blocks of our methodology and what we do. And then as you move up different levels, you get to access more uh, uh, tools that they give you the, the application of the methodology. And then if you get like the MCM, or level four and even level three, you get to see those live and, and, and how they work. So in, in level one, going into those outlook periods to see those projections and also all every level should take a look at that select uh, sector spider ETF review because the symbols that we cover in there are very tradable. They're highly liquid and they're great option traders and stock or ETF traders. Okay, so that's in the level one, level two, future speak minutes. If you're not familiar with it, you definitely want to check out Future Speak Minutes. It is a way for you to reflect on uh, the Future Speak video in a way that suits your specific trading needs in terms of the markets and, and the symbols, the instruments that you follow. So uh, we have energy futures, currency futures, precious metals, cryptos, treasuries, food stock indexes, grains and softs. And you can click right on that link that will take you right to the starting point where RV goes through the analysis uh, on that particular market. And then we have some snippets of highlights uh, regarding those markets. So that's in the Future Speak minutes. Uh, Future Speak is a great way just to learn the methodology, be able to hear RV talk through the weekly daily analysis, and be able to hear uh, the trade planning process there as well. All right. Uh, also in level two, if you didn't see, if you don't look at these videos, you should. And that is uh, short-term swing trade planning videos that RV puts together. And what we're going to do moving forward, as you'll see here, I, our support team is creating hot links and uh, highlighting the specific symbols that are covered. So again, you just simply click on the symbol, or I would recommend watching the video. It's only about 20 minutes long. He steps through that trade planning process on those symbols. And then if you want to uh, go back to specific ones, or if you just want to focus on a specific symbol, you can do, uh, do that very easily and quickly. So that is in uh, level two. We have stock sectors and uh, just about once or twice a month, there's a swing trading uh, video in there. All right, level three. Uh, and I've mentioned this one before, but it's worth continuing to bring up. RV, myself, and Katie, we put a lot of time into uh, the trade planning process. And again, our services are designed around to optimizing that for you. But we do have live sessions. RV has office hours. I have live trade planning sessions where we convert the methodology into to actual uh, trade planning uh, evidence. And we organize that into the upside, the downside, where the bias is, and, and talk that through at the outlook periods that you're most interested in. And those recordings are available for level three and level four members, and they're in the library. Okay, so that is for level three. Also for level three, if you didn't know, you do have the, the base MCM. Now the base MCM has been upgraded to include, and I'll go over this on Thursday when I do a little deeper dive into this information, but the base now includes the near term. It's not the intraday or the three minute, but you do get the near term trader type. 
and the 15 minute time frame. So there is more information now in that base version, the MCM. It is in the ultimate momentum companion. It is tracking thousands of data points in real time all throughout the market session. And it is available to you in, in a base form at in uh, the level three. Uh, let's jump over to level four. With level four, what I wanted to highlight uh, in this segment was that the MCM premium version is now available for uh, level four members. Okay, so if you are a level four member, there are some of you that were grandfathered in uh, months ago as early, when we were offering this as early adopters. Uh, there was a question about what's coming new in the future and Slim has alluded to a few things that are gonna be uh, really remarkable in terms of continuing to optimize your, your trade planning process and getting very specific what your needs are. But we're, we're going to release an MCM pro version which will be coming uh, you know, within the next, I would say six to eight weeks on both of these. I, I don't wanna step out and say that they're gonna come a lot earlier when, when we can't deliver. They're very complex to build, uh, but they are coming there. We are in the process of developing those now. Uh, sooner rather than later, you will see some enhancements come that will be sort of teasers into the pro version that we're going to beta. Uh, we, we've added on another a developer, and he's going to contribute on, on the pro side, where our, our software architect is really uh, finalizing the foundation for the, the data trader version. But the MCM premium version, I'm going to pull this up right here, right now. And I, again, I'll go through this deeper. But what I wanted to cover is that this, this is the sum of the evidence right here, okay? And some of the evidence... Uh, based on momentum conditions are two most dependent and reliable momentum indicators, depending on your, your trader style, right? So if you're intraday, near-term, short-term, you can come in and you can click on your trader type and you can, you can find out what that trade setup condition is right at the moment. And the MCM has no emotion. So if you want to talk about algorithms and AI and everything else, this has no emotion and it's just, it's just it has an algorithm designed to generate an output. And so as soon as that, that combination of uh, analysis based on the momentum is there and, and reaches the threshold, it will generate the, the output. Now, if you're not using the, the premium version yet and you're a level four member, check it out. If you have questions, I've put together uh, videos on it. I try to cover it in, in the trade planning session uh, some in some way uh, every time I do one. And like I said, on Thursday, I'll, I'll go deeper into it again. But we have released, this was about a month ago or so, uh, general alerts for the MCM. And I'm going to pull over Discord right now. On Discord, there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight channels. And you can turn these on and off. And I'll, again, I'll go deeper into this, but you simply right, right click and you go to notification settings and you can say all messages or you can say nothing. If you set all messages for any one of those, uh, which are the, all the trade setup conditions, then anytime there is a, a cardinal change right now, meaning let's say you go from neutral to slightly bullish or neutral to bullish, you will get an alert that goes into a feed. And I'll show you what the feed looks like. Like today, let's go to intraday bullish as an example. So you're getting a feed all day long of when things are changing. So if you're an intraday trader, I'm telling you, it's incredible. And I'm not just saying that because uh, you know, we, we designed this, we, we invented it, and we're, we're offering it and selling it. I'm telling you as a trader and a technical analyst, as Slim mentioned, when you understand the bias based on momentum and you have a pullback and you want to be part of that next impulse move, that's what the M MCM is designed to do. And it will alert you when something shifts. Now, is there a certainty in this? No. But again, we're about odds and we want to put those odds in your favor. And the MCM is designed to help optimize your trade planning and provide you with the two key things, which is what's my bias and when is there a new opportunity for the next impulse? And that's exactly what this does. And it also gives you a feel for uh, shifts in the market. When all of a sudden you get 60, 70 alerts about, uh, you know, out of a symbol list, let's say 115, the things are shifting bullish, whether it's uh, intraday or, or even if you're not an intraday trader, when you see that, it, then you can go, oh, wow, let me take a look at my charts. If I'm a near-term trader, short-term trader, have things changed? But then you can go right to, let's say the near-term or the short-term, and you can just click right on trade setup condition, and you'll, you'll be able to see the most recent changes. 
So when people ask, well, is it real time? Is it helpful in terms of uh, helping me with signals or, or uh, pertinent information? Absolutely, because as soon as something changes, it is going to um, generate that condition. And if you have the, the premium version with uh, Discord set up, you will get an alert. Right now, it generates all alerts. With the pro version, we'll have that we're that we're working on is you'll be able to go right into a symbol. You'll be able to right click on on the con current condition, and you'll have a little drop down, and we'll be able to indicate when you want to be notified if something changes. That is going to be incredible, because if if you're looking at something, for example, that falls in neutral, let's say that you're a QQQ trader and you're a swing trader of the next one to three weeks, you don't have time to follow the markets necessarily, you'll be able to right click and it'll alert you when it goes to, if you want slightly bullish, bullish or very bullish. So that's coming. Then if you have a particular indicator at a specific time frame that you want to be alerted about, so let's say that you wanna know when the SPY two hour shifts negative, you'll be able to right click on that, set the alert and be alerted when that happens. The final one will be price. So we'll have an ecosystem for you to be able to utilize the MCM in a variety of different ways to optimize your trade planning. And then ultimately, hopefully in the next six months, we'll, we will have, and that's the plan is that we will have MCM charts. So you'll be able to click and, and see into when there's a short term uh, set up weekly, daily, two hour, you'll be able to see what that looks like with our, our um, uh, proprietary indicators and how that looks on the chart, similar to what we have right here, but it won't be limited to only toss, which means it'll open up the door for us to be able to share this with those of you that don't have toss. Toss is a fantastic platform for us. Uh, and that's the one that it makes, uh, allows us to do the work that we do, but we're working on alternatives so that we can provide more information on different platforms. Uh, so that's what I have for today. And uh, I'll, we can catch up more on Thursday. All right, thanks guys. That was absolutely fantastic. Great job, okay, man. Great. Good to hear. Yeah, really great. All right, that's going to wrap us up for the day. Um, this was uh, just, uh, I think, just a great show. If, a couple comments that I want to answer on there. Claude is asking, will the impulse monitor be in the premium or require an upgrade grade to pro? Matt, you want to handle that? Sure. The, uh, the MCM day trader impulse monitor will require an upgrade to pro. We have to remember that all of these services do require significant investment on our part. That we are doing everything we can to provide the base and the premium in the current membership levels. But as we get into these very advanced services, there has to be, you know, a charge for those. And and the day trader version will also be standalone. Yes, it will. That's a good point. Yeah. So you can just get you can just uh, subscribe to the day trader version and not pro if you're just a day trader and that's what you want. Right. So we're making them both available that way. Uh, and the last two things is that uh, from Bruce, he says, Slim, thank you. Your staff is really impressive. And thank you for that. And I completely agree. And Cam says, thank you for all the hard work. That is going to wrap us up for today. I'm going to say goodbye. Turn it over to these guys. Say your goodbyes. Take care, everybody. This was a great session. We look forward to many more. See you in a couple of weeks. You guys. Thanks. Bye-bye.